Welcome to Art Coded. In this video, I want to talk about strappy life cycle hooks. And for this, uh, I am going to take a few lessons uh, that I have recently added to my complete strappy course on Udemy that show not only theory, but also a real life uh, example and uh, application of this uh, concept. And uh, don't worry if you aren't enrolled uh, in the course, because uh, the use case is really simple. We just have uh, a blogging application with uh, a post content type that uh, links to admin users with uh, a author's relation field. So post has uh, authors and authors in this case are users of the admin panel, of course. This is the initial case. And as you will see, there is uh, an issue with with this uh, implementation and we solved these uh, in the course using specifically lifecycle hooks. Anyways, I will also insert in the video description a companion post I wrote on this exact uh, topic that you can use uh, as a reference, a blog post, and also uh, two GitHub links to the initial code that you can clone to follow along with the tutorial and the final code if you need to compare. And if this kind of content is useful for you, consider subscribing uh, to my channel, liking this video and activating uh, notifications, and also check out my complete Strapi course coupon in the description. And now let's get to the tutorial. In this lesson, I want to talk about uh, life cycle hooks. And uh, I want to introduce, first of all, the theory of what uh, life cycle hooks are, and then immediately experiment them in a real uh, use case for our blog application that I think is uh, the best way we can understand how they work. So first of all, the definition from the Strapi docs. Life cycle hooks are, are functions that get uh, triggered when Strapi queries are called. So everything happens in your app and specifically any operation that involves your content types can trigger these lifecycle hooks, these special functions. They are triggered automatically when managing content through the administration panel or when developing custom code using the queries. So it doesn't matter if the operation occurs via the admin panel or via your custom code. And they can be uh, customized uh, either declaratively or programmatically. And we'll see what this uh, means. So these are the available trigger events uh, that you, again, can find uh, in uh, the docs. I will put the link uh, in uh, the notes. So we have uh, before create, before create many, after create, after create many and uh, so forth. So basically for any of the CRUD operations uh, available in Strapi, you can perform, uh, you can trigger a lifecycle hook function either before the operation occurs or immediately after it. One warning though, uh, do not confuse lifecycle hooks with web hooks. They are a similar concept in a certain way, but uh, Lifecycle hooks are usually meant for operations that are internal to your application logic. On the other hand, web hooks, which we'll talk about uh, later on in this section, are used uh, usually to uh, notify a third party, like uh, an external web service, that uh, something has occurred in your app. So in both cases, they are triggered by some kind of event in your application, but lifecycle hooks are used to perform something else in your app after the event, while web hooks are not used to perform another operation in your app, but to just notify an external service that the original event has occurred. So I hope the difference is clear. Now let's make a quick pause. And in the next lesson, we'll see how we will learn about lifecycle hooks by implementing a real-world application. So how are we going to implement lifecycle hooks in our blog application? Let's start by mentioning that we have currently an issue that is our API doesn't return post authors. So we 
have created, as you might remember, a relation that is called authors, a relation field, between the post content type and our admin users type. But when we query our post collection, the author field doesn't get returned, and we have seen this when we tested a REST API in previous sections. Why is this happening? The reason is that admin users are private by default, for security reasons in Strapi. And so I want to use lifecycle hooks to solve this problem. So we'll do basically three things. We'll firstly create a new author content type that will be a sort of duplicate of the admin user, but of course not private and so free to be returned as expected by our API. They are a sort of a copy of the admin user, so we will need to keep admin users and the new author content type in sync in some way. And that's where lifecycle hooks will help us. So we will uh, create uh, authors for every admin. And we'll do this uh, not manually, but automatically using uh, lifecycle hooks, as we'll see in a minute. So we will uh, automatically create an author entity for every admin user that gets created. And also we will keep this sync when admin users get updated, because we have to keep into account both events, creation and update. We will also automatically assign authors to posts when new posts get created. So when we create a post, we know that it's being created by a certain user of the admin panel, so by a certain admin user. And from that information, we want to automatically assign to the post not the current admin user, but the corresponding author that we have created in previous steps. So I think this might sound confusing right now, but as we perform these steps in sequence, you will see how this all makes more sense. So once again, where do we start from? We have our post with a authors relation with admin users. So let's check this out real quick. So here I am in my Strapi dashboard. And if we visit the content type builder and the post content type, let me enlarge this, you will see that the authors field is a relation with the user from admin, which is what I am calling admin user. And this is exactly the field that doesn't get returned by default by the REST API. And so how can we solve this? Well, as I've said, what we'll do now is we are going to create a new content type. You can think of this new content type, which we'll call author, as an exact copy of the admin user. And in fact, we will use the same fields that you can find under settings, users. You can see here, the admin users have a first name, last name, an email, a role, a username, and a user status. So what I want to do is to create uh, this author content type with, I wouldn't say all of these fields, but uh, the ones that are relevant for a post author that are, in my opinion, first name, last name, the email, the username, and uh, that's it. So uh, this will be uh, your exercise. You are going to create this new author content type with the, the fields that I have mentioned, and this content type will be then assigned to the post as the author's relation. So we will also need to edit the author's field, not pointing anymore to the admin users, but to the authors. Also, we need to keep the information about what admin user each author refers to. And so that can be done only by adding a convenience relation field in the author that is a one-to-one -one relation with the admin user. 
And so this will be part of your uh, exercise as well. So our first job now is uh, the point number one of creating the new author content type. Once again, as a recap, your job is now to create an author collection type with the same fields of the admin user and also add a relation field with a single admin user, the one that it mirrors, basically. And also change the author's relation field of posts to point to the new author collection that you've just created. Now take your time to complete this exercise based on my instructions and I'll see you in the next lesson for my own solution. So here I am in my Strapi dashboard and we can see how we can create our new author content type. So head over to the content type builder to create our new collection type, which is author. And I will also disable the draft publish system, which we don't need for the author. And then we will add, first of all, the first name which is required and similarly the last name which is required as well the email field that we'll call simply email and it is required the username which is a text field which is required and finally and very importantly, we need a relation with the admin user that uh, this author is going to uh, mirror, basically, to duplicate. So user from admin is uh, the content type we want to point to. And this is a one-to-one -one relation. An author corresponds to a single admin user. I click on finish. And here is our new author content type. So I'm going to click on save and uh, now go to post. And uh, instead of having this author's relationship pointing to admin user, this will need to point now to author. And uh, we still want to have possibly more than one author for each post, but of course, uh, we will set our first author automatically using lifecycle hooks just for the user that is creating the post. Then, of course, we leave to the admins the possibility to manually add additional co-authors of the same post. So I click on finish and on save. So we have our new author's relation with a custom content type that, uh, by the way, will be kept in sync with uh, the admin users. And how can we automatically perform both the creation of authors and uh, the assignment of the authors to each post that gets created? Well, of course, we will use lifecycle hooks. And we'll see in the next lesson how. So in the last lesson, we have successfully performed our first step of three, creating a new author content type. Now, as I've said, we don't want to have to manually create authors for each admin user. We want these to be automatic. So we want to automatically create an author entity for every admin user and also update that author entry for each update that occurs to admin users. And we'll do this by using lifecycle hooks. But before doing this, I want to talk about two approaches that you can use while building lifecycle hooks. You can either use a declarative approach or a programmatic approach. And what's the difference? Well, declarative approach is the one you will use when we want to create lifecycle hooks for content types that you created, because these get created inside the folder structure of your own content types. Programmatic approach, instead, 
is good for all the other cases because in this case you add the lifecycle hook declaration in the bootstrap function of your Strapi server. So basically you are subscribing to events by taking advantage of the function that bootstraps the whole Strapi application. And so that's a more convenient way in cases in which you have to create hooks that are not tied to specific content types that you have manually created. And so in this specific case, because we have to create a lifecycle hook for admin users, which are not created by ourselves, we will use the programmatic approach. And we'll do this to automatically create or update an instance of author when a creation or update of an admin user occurs. So first of all, we have to locate our bootstrap function, which is inside the source index file. So this is actually the entry point of our application. We have two functions, register and bootstrap. We are interested in the bootstrap function to basically register lifecycle hooks at the application level. So we will first of all uncomment this strappy object because of course we will need it to perform the operations that we need to perform. And so now we want to declare that we want to listen to lifecycle events. And the way we do this is by calling the strappy.db so we are listening at the database level. So we are listening specifically to database events dot life cycles dot subscribe. So that's how we subscribe explicitly to events that occur at database level. And we need to pass an object that contains a few keys. The first one is models. Models is needed to specify the UID of the content types we are interested in. So what are the content types for which we want to listen to lifecycle events? In this case, only the admin user, which has this UID, admin dot dot user, because admin is the plugin that introduces this model and user is the name of the model itself, of the content type. So we are only listening to events for this model, for the model with this UID. And what events we are interested in. So now we introduce our first event and the consequent lifecycle hook that we want to trigger. And the event we are interested in is the creation. So we want that for each admin user that gets created, we want to then do something which is to create a new author. So the function we're interested in is after create. And we want to call in this case, which function an asynchronous function, because of course we have to perform CRUD operations, which takes an event object that has some information about the event that has occurred in this case, the creation of the admin user and then performs something. So here we need to create an author instance from the fields of the admin user that has just been created. That's what we want to do. So basically the first thing we need is to actually extract the fields from the newly created admin user. And how do we do this? Of course, the information is inside the event object. But I want to spend a few words on this event because you need to know this in detail. So let's switch once again to the slides for one moment. And here is the table taken from the Strapi docs about the event object. So what are the five keys it includes? So first of all, we have the action. The action is uh, basically the information about the event that has just occurred. In our case, it will be an after create event. 
and we uh, of course don't need it in this case because we are inside the after create uh, lifecycle hook and so we exactly know that uh, the after create event occurred but in cases in which you want to perform the same operation for different events of course you may want to uh, use the action to distinguish among the different events that may have triggered your uh, reusable function so just keep this in mind in this case we are not interested in this the same can be said for the model in our code we just specified a single model that will trigger our functions and so we don't need to use the model object that specifies which model was interested by the event in our case we know it will be the admin user model but once again this can be useful in cases in which you subscribe to more than one model events then we have two important keys that are the params and the result they are similar but uh, somehow also very different because uh, the params are the information the payload that is attached to the request that is in our case uh, creating the new admin user so in our case someone is creating an admin user so there is a, a creation query that will have some payload with the username etc the result is similar but is the object that has been created so it contains the result of the action and in fact it is only available for the after events because of course a result can only exist if the event has already occurred so in our case while well, the params will contain the query payload the result will contain the actual uh, admin user object that has been uh, created they will be somehow similar but in the result we are certain that uh, the admin user has been successfully created and that now exists and so that's what we are only interested in our after create hook as we'll see in a second and then there is a state object that is rarely needed just when you want to perform for instance a before create hook and an after create hook then you can send some state some information between the two functions uh, by using uh, this uh, object so in case you want to communicate and pass some data between a hook function that gets uh, executed uh, first and another one that follows with that said let's come back to our code and uh, we now know that in our event object we are only interested uh, in the result so i can uh, immediately destructure this event object and only get the result because I know that now I can extract the fields for, from this object, this instance that has just been created and that is triggering the after create hook. And so we are going to extract all the fields we are interested in, which in this case are, of course, the first name, the last name, the email, the username, that we will use to create our author but also the id that we'll need to use to create the relationship between the author and the current admin user furthermore we also want to get the created at and updated at fields that are automatically uh, created by Strapi for each uh, content type because uh, we also want to set these in the new author instance we will create so that we know that these two instances are created and updated at the same time so they are really 100% in sync and so we will destructure these from result Oh, and it is not formatting my code because I'm missing here a comma at uh, the end of this line, of course. Now, with uh, these uh, fields, we want to create our new author. And the way we do this is uh, by using the Strapi object and the service uh, for creating uh, our new content type. So we're going to say await strapi.service 
and the service we want to call is the one for the content type uh, API column column author dot author as we learned dot the operation is create and we needed to pass an object as you may remember with a data key that contains all the fields we want to assign and in my case all the fields are called the same way so I'm gonna use the shorthand syntax so first name last name email username created at and updated at but that's uh, not enough we also want to add an admin user relation for which we have to provide an array of the IDs of the related entities and so that's where our ID is required this way the admin user relation field for the new author we are creating points to the admin user that has just been created which is referred by its ID so I'm gonna save this and to test this out, uh, I first of all need to restart my application, which uh, crashed because probably I saved uh, the file while it wasn't ready yet. Now I'm going to switch to my application and specifically to the settings menu. And here I have my admin users and I'm going to create a new user. As you can see, I have already created many test users previously. Now I'm going to create uh, another test. Now I'm going to create uh, a test. Test admin. And uh, as last name, uh, just user. As an email, I'm going to say my new admin at arcoded.net. As a user role, uh, everything is fine. We haven't uh, distinguished among uh, the different roles, so author will be fine, but also any other role. And I'm going now to invite the user. But as you can see, there is an error. So let's check in the console so I can also show how to check the errors that may occur in your uh, admin UI when testing. So let's uh, see in our response, data error username must be a string but the final value was null so what happened here is because uh, the admin ui doesn't uh, request a username for the new admin users but only an email the uh, username field is null and so when we uh, try to assign the username to the new author we get uh, an exception because uh, by mistake in uh, my author collection I set the username as uh, required. And so this was a mistake because uh, actually admin users can be created without a username, actually are usually created without a username when they are manually created at least. And so we also want to be able to create authors without a username. So I'm going to correct this and save once again. And now if I go to users first of all you can verify that uh, actually the user was created my new admin you can see here was uh, created but uh, the error occurred in the following operation in the hook function so i'm gonna delete these and i'm going to create it again with the, the same email so my new admin at, at coded.net and with the, the same role invite user and now it uh, worked at least uh, it uh, created uh, the new user what matters though is that in our content manager we should see a new author created and sure enough you can see that we have our test admin user with uh, this email and if you open it it has also correctly an admin user relation field with the test admin as we expected and wanted. So in other words, we have successfully automated the creation of an author as a direct consequence of the creation of an admin user. 
Now, in the next lesson, we will also ensure that any update to the admin user is reflected on the author. In the last lesson, we have uh, successfully created authors for every admin user that gets created, but we also want to keep entities in sync in case of updates. So what we're going to do is, as you may imagine, we are going to uh, also subscribe to a new event, which is after update. So just make sure to position yourself after the after create method is closed. So here and here I am going to add the after update key that uh, has an asynchronous function that once again takes the event object and performs some operation. So let me summarize with some comments uh, what we need to perform to keep uh, these entities in sync. We know that uh, this function gets triggered when a certain admin user has been modified. But how do we know what author we need to modify as a consequence? Well, of course, we need to find the author that corresponds to the current admin user. And that is done by leveraging the admin user relation field that you have created in your author content type that keeps track of the relationship between an author and an admin user. So the first step is to get the ID of the author that corresponds to the admin user that's been just updated. Okay, I hope this makes sense. So the corresponding author will be the result of a wait strapi.service the service is still the one for the author dot find so we want to find the author and how do we find the author well we want to get the author for which the admin user is exactly an array that only contains the ID of the admin user that has been updated. And we get that from the result object that is encapsulated in our event. So let's go on and destructure this and get the result because we need it. And here we'll put result.id. So we take the ID of the admin user that's just been updated and we search for the author that has a relation with this admin user okay and this is the corresponding author now if you test this out uh, you will see that uh, because this is a, a find operation and not a find one operation you won't get a single entity but an array containing a single entity. And this array is called results and contains all the entities that has found with this find operation. So we need to wrap this in parentheses for convenience and get the results array and the first element, which we know will be the only element. And once again, you can test this out by um, just logging the result of the find operation, okay? So this is the way in which we fetch the corresponding author. And next, the second step, of course, is to update the author accordingly, based on the update operation that has occurred for the admin user. So we need to once again get all the new keys of the modified admin user and this is done by taking a first name last name email username and once again created at and updated at from the result and then we are gonna say await strapi.service once again for the api author.author 
the operation we want to perform is an update. And for the update, date, for the update, we want to, we need to provide the ID of the entity we want to update, which is the corresponding author dot ID, which we previously found and the payload, which is uh, once again, uh, which includes a data object that will include all the modified keys. and update that. I think uh, we actually don't need to get and then reassign the created that because of course that can't be modified. So I can just remove it also from here. We just need the updated that. And that's it. So we can now test that if I modify this test admin user, we should see that modification to also impact our author. So let's test this out. Let's firstly locate our new user. I have so many test users, as you can see, but this is the one. We want to change this to edited admin, save, and in our content manager, author, you can see that the first name is now edited ad. So we successfully automated uh, not only the creation of the author from the admin users, but also we kept in sync automatically the two collections whenever an update occurs. If you want, uh, but I don't think this is necessary, uh, you can also do the same for the deletion operation. So in other words, uh, make sure that every author gets deleted automatically for any deletion of uh, the corresponding admin user. I don't think this is necessary because basically it's uh, very rare that an admin user gets uh, deleted. And so I don't see this uh, so uh, useful. But if you want, you can do that uh, as an exercise. So. We have uh, created our, our author content type. We have uh, used lifecycle hooks at the application level to keep uh, those uh, entities in sync with uh, the admin users. Now, the last step we'll see in the next lesson is to automatically assign authors to posts. And now to the third and final step of our implementation, we want to automatically assign authors to posts. Of course, when uh, an uh, admin user is uh, creating a post, uh, we know exactly who is uh, the admin user, but uh, we have to make some additional uh, work to find the author that corresponds to the admin user and then assign it uh, as an author for the post. And we'll do this once again using lifecycle hooks. And as we've seen previously, we have uh, two approaches to lifecycle hooks. We have used the, the programmatic approach for the admin user hooks. Now for the post hook we are going to create, we want to instead switch to the declarative approach that is simpler because we are just going to create a file inside the folder structure of posts. In short, we are going to use the declarative approach to listen to new posts creation to automatically assign the admin user who's creating the post or more precisely the corresponding author instance as an author. So I am going to my source API post directory and here inside the content types post subfolder where the schema.json file is located for this custom content type, I'm going to create a new file which must be called lifecycles.js and here we need to export, so module.exports, an object that contains one key for each uh, hook function we want to implement. We may think to implement the after create method, but this means that uh, the post would uh, appear in our UI without an author 
and only be updated immediately after it gets created uh, without an author. And so, for some uh, milliseconds, we would have uh, a created post uh, without any author. Maybe this is not optimal, and so I thought that uh, a better approach would be to implement before create uh, that makes uh, our post uh, receive an author immediately before it gets saved. And so when our post is saved, it already has the author attached to it. So before create is once again an asynchronous function, which receives the event as usual. And to assign the author, we first of all need to find the admin user who create, not created, but is about to create the post. And how do we do this? So remember that in case of uh, after hooks, uh, we have the result of the operation, but here we are in a before hook. And so we only have uh, the params object that uh, encapsulates uh, the data of the uh, request of the query that is uh, in this case uh, going to create uh, the post. And so we can say that the admin user ID, that is what we need to create the relationship, as you may remember, is params.data, that is the payload of the request, dot, and if you try logging params.data, you will see that as any creation request, there is a key that is created by that is exactly what we need because it includes the ID of the admin user that is performing that creation operation. And so that's exactly the ID of the admin user. And now we can go to our second step, which is to find the corresponding author instance. And so the author will be a wait and here we may use the Strapi service, but in this case, we need to apply a filter that directly involves a field that is a relation. And I didn't find an immediate way to perform this operation with services, so I'm going one level down and use the entity service that allows this in a very simple and intuitive way that is a strapi .entity service dot find many and the first argument is the UID of the content type involved so API author dot author and the second one is the arguments for our find operation so in this case we wanna apply some filters and specifically our admin user admin user must uh, exactly be an array containing the admin user ID we previously saved in this constant. Always remember that find many returns obviously an array and not a single element because in general it can have more results, more matches. And so we need just to get the first element and we know it also to be the only element in this array. And now, because we are in a before operation, we don't need to edit an entity that has just been created like we did previously in our global hooks. In this case, we can just slightly modify the params of the request because it hasn't completed yet, so that's very handy. And so we can just include the author information in the, the payload of the post creation request. That is exactly the params object. So we are going to update the data payload of the request for creating the new post by adding the author to the author's relation field, okay? So we know that uh, the data payload for the post creation request is inside params.data. And now the uh, Strapi documentation, honestly, is not always uh, complete. Uh, and this is one of these cases. Uh, 
I uh, tried, and you can do the same if you want, to create a post with uh, some uh, author manually attached to the author's uh, relation field. So I manually selected one or two authors, and I found out that uh, the authors you set are not directly in the parents.data.authors, but for some reason they are nested inside a dot .connect nested object. Okay, so the exact place in which you will find the authors for the current request of post creation is parents.data.authors.connect. So this is very important and honestly is hard to get just reading the strappy docs. Equals, and here let me make a mistake for one second. We might think to set these to author.id. So we might say that the author's relation must include the author ID. And why this is wrong? Because uh, the incoming request uh, could already include uh, some authors that uh, are manually selected by the content editor. So as you remember, the post content type, in the post content type, uh, the author's relation is uh, one to many. And so here we just have one author uh, created in our content manager. But if we had many, we may select as many authors as we want. And so in our code, as we edit the query, we don't need to just set it to this only element, but we need to add this element to the existing array. And so the way we do this is by using the spread operator and reinserting all the existing elements that are inside the parents.data.authors.connect and then attaching at the end of this array author.id. So if uh, this array is empty, author.id will be the only one after this operation. Otherwise, it will be added to one or more existing elements. And now we only need to test this out. And uh, in order to test this, because uh, now I am logged uh, as uh, info at arcoded.net, uh, and uh, we don't have an author for this user because, of course, it was created at the beginning of our project when we didn't have the corresponding lifecycle hook. I'm going to manually create an author for the current user I'm using. So info at atcoded.net, atcoded, and the relation, of course, is crucial with art that is the current user. I save this. So now we have our corresponding author in place and I can just go to post and create a new test post with some content, even if it doesn't matter. And regarding the authors, I well, I can try to uh, set edited admin as a manual author. And of course, uh, the result of our test should be that uh, the author's array gets also populated with the art, which is uh, the current author. Let's see if uh, saving these uh, works as expected. So let's go down. And as you can see, the author corresponding to the current admin user performing the creation operation gets added, and once again added, not replaced, to the array of authors. So we have the one we have selected manually, who may be a co-author we want to manually select for this post, plus the current user. Okay, so that's it. We successfully used lifecycle hooks implemented in two different ways to automate some logic for our application, implementing specifically a workaround that was needed because of the security policies that Strapi automatically applies to admin users, as we've said. But this provided us with a chance to experiment with a real use case, the lifecycle hooks and their automation power.